Today we're gonna look at the slowest Magic the Gathering cards of all time. I'm gonna start off with Cyclical Evolution. Guess what? This is a five mana giant growth, but it's got suspend for a green and two generic. And then what that means is by, so by turn three, you've paid three mana. Then you have to wait a turn. Then you have to wait another turn. And then finally, what? By, are we turn six? We finally get that. Plus three, plus three. Oh yeah. Just gotta wait uh, to make, we make one down payment. We wait our, I don't know, three month waiting period. And all of a sudden we're gonna get that buff. Target creature gets plus three, plus three until end of turn. But you get to remove cyclical evolution from the game with three time counters on it. So if you wait long enough again, you'll get another giant growth right around the corner. All right, let's take a look at what you guys have up in store. Ooh, Toads with the Mox Tantalite. Mox Tantalite. This card's so slow. I don't think anyone plays this. No one even considers even putting this in their deck at all. All right, for nothing, well, not exactly nothing, you can play zero mana and suspend it for three. Tap to add one mana of any color. That's right, you need a, if you ever, you have never, you never owned the Moxin? You want to own like a Mox Sapphire? Or I guess this is actually Mox Opal with no downside. Except you got to wait three whole entire turns. Wait one turn, wait two turns, wait three turns, and boom, you can add one mana of any color. Next up, Islarf with Nihilith. Never heard of that one. Nihilith is a six mana four four horror with fear. Suspend for seven. That's a long time. Oh, but you can pay two mana for it. All right, so you suspend seven for this thing. Whenever a card is put into an opponent's graveyard from anywhere, if Nihilith is suspended, you may remove a time counter from Nihilith. You actually could speed this thing out, actually. So if you start killing things, the, the best case scenario is like, it's a four, four with fear. That's like significantly worse. You know, I'm thinking of um, Dothy Voidwalker, which just costs two mana. Like, we're not suspending that thing. For two mana, you already get a 3-2 with Shadow. And it's basically, you know, it's attacking for a reasonable amount of power compared to the Nihilith. Our first super chat from the meme, Bruly. Thank you very much for your super chat. Helix Pinnacle. Unless you got infinite mana. You're not wrong. It was, a, it was a card designed for infinite mana. One green, enchantment shroud, X, put X tower counters on your Helix Pinnacle. At the beginning of your upkeep, if there are 100 or more tower counters on Helix Pinnacle, you win the game. It is actually, t is it so hard to pull off? Like, probably. If you're in a state, a board state where nothing is happening, the only way this would work, no one's doing anything. You got 10 mana up. All right, end of turn, put a bunch of counters on my Helix Pinnacle. All right, end of turn, put a bunch of counters on my Helix Pinnacle. I don't see anyone reasonably getting this thing to 100 and then going for victory. Nathan with the Heroes Remembered. Uh, English version, please. Nine mana to gain 20 life. I don't even think that's worth it. Or you could suspend. So one way or another, this thing's coming out on like turn 10. Because you could also suspend it for a single white. Rather than play this card from your hand, you can pay a white. And then you just... <laughs> 10 turns, you'll be dead. You'll be absolutely stone cold dead before this thing comes off suspend. Never happening. Oh, I love this one. From friend, your friendly neighborhood idiot. Sleep Cursed Fae. We'll sleep Chris Fairy. Okay, it's a blue 3-3. Three, three. It's a flying wizard. It's got flying. It's got ward 2. I mean, this card is absolutely insane. So what on earth is the downside? Well, it enters the battlefield tapped with three stun counters on it. And you have to pay a blue one and one generic to untap your sleep cursed fae. So otherwise, if you're not going to activate a bit that ability, you are not attacking with this card until turn 4. Actually, is that worked? If it would become if it would become untap, remove a stun counter from it instead. So actually, no, you're not attacking with it until turn five. So turn one, you play it, remove a stun counter, and it comes with battlefield tapped. Uh, turn three, you remove a stun counter. Turn four, you remove a stun counter. It's still tapped. Oh my god, this is the slowest one drop creature of all time. 
Slow indeed. Rated Lex. Uh, what do you got for us? Warping worm. It takes forever to make it big. Okay, we got a uh, blue green two generic one one worm with phasing. During your upkeep, you can pay four mana or warping worm phases out. That is beyond terrible. Uh, when Warping Worm phases in, put a plus one, plus one counter on it. Yeah, it would take forever to make big. In fact, I don't think it's getting big at all. How, so, okay, hold on. During your upkeep, pay four mana or it phases out. Whenever it phases in, you get a counter. We are literally paying four mana for a 1-1 one, one to become a 2-2. Two, two. Not even next turn, right? So, next turn, it phases out. So, turn... Six, it phases in as a 2-2. Two, two. Turn seven, it phases out. Turn eight, it turns into a 3-3. Three, three. Yeah, be, you'd be dead before it becomes a 5-5. Five, five. These days, we get 5-5 five, five creatures for four mana right off the bat. Making it a 4-4 four, four at max. Or, I don't know, maybe you're talking about another card. Yeah, this is a very, very slow card. Very, very slow. Get your hardened scales out. Harden, you gotta, we gotta buff this thing up somehow. Otherwise, otherwise, I don't, <laughs> I don't know how we push the power level of this thing. It does have protection from sweepers, okay? It's going to phase out every other turn. It's the only good news about this card. You know, it would have been interesting if they just get, made a 4-4 four, four or something right off the bat. And then it turned into a 5-5. Five, five, and it turned into a 6-6. Six, six. Give it a little bit of benefit. They just start. It just started off way too small. It was born small. It didn't know it could get big until uh, it was about... 80 years old. Okay, next up, let's take a look at Old Boy's Cocoon. It's terribly slow for almost no payoff. Uh, also, better read the current Oracle text instead of the OG. Oh, the so the uh, the ancient scripture is no good. Okay, let's read the Oracle text. When Cocoon enters the battlefield, tap enchanted creature and put three poopa counters on Cocoon. The poopa counters. We're gonna poopa around here. Enchanted creature doesn't untap during your untap step if co Cocoon has a poopa counter on it. So it's basically like a stun counter. At the beginning of your upkeep, remove a poopa counter from Cocoon if you can't sacrifice it. And then put a plus one plus one counter on enchanted creature and the creature gains flying. That is... That's sad as hell. I just... Can you put this on anything? Emerson Battlefield, tap enchanted creature. Oh! You know what you could do? This is literally a removal spell for green. I never, I don't think people looked at it like that. When it, oh no, it says no, no, it can't be a removal spell. Enchant creature you control. Damn it! This card is just an absolute mm. fail all over the place. I have to basically lock out my own. I'm basically putting my own creature into exile, so that it can come back into play with a plus one plus one counter, just like warping worm. We're gonna warping worm our creatures. Even worse. Okay, next up we've got uh, Kagan with what about Dark Depths? Dark Depths, absolutely. If you're playing with this card fair. Yeah, and there's a battlefield with 10 ice counters on it. And for three mana, remove an ice counter from Dark Depths. When Dark Depths has no ice counters on it, sacrifice it. If you do, create a Merit Lage, a legendary 2020 black avatar creature token with flying and indestructible. It, re it would require. Let's get Nikachu's calculator out for the people who can't do the math. We need to remove 10 ice counters at a rate of 3 mana per counter. We need to sink 30 mana into this card. In divisible by 3s. In order to unlock our Merit Lage. Um, yeah, the I once, only once on camera, saw someone be able to pull this off. And by pull, have the sorry the capability to pull it off. They didn't actually do it. They like would just pass the turn with like nine mana up, and then when it went to their turn, they completely forgot that they can use the uh, ice counter ability, the ice remover ability on dark depths. So they had the chance to do this, they didn't. But I only only once I saw someone uh, who, who could have maybe pulled that off. Otherwise, people are just cheating the stupid dark depths into play. Uh, Battle of Wits? What, you mean like shuffling the deck? Otherwise, I don't think Battle of Wits is a particularly slow card. I mean, you put Battle of Wits in play next turn, you win the game. In my opinion, 
passed out with the smoldering egg. The thing in the ice at home. Oh, uh, two mana for a 0-4 defender. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, put a number of ember counters on smoldering egg equal to the number of mana spent to cast that spell. If the smoldering egg has seven or more ember counters on it, remove them and transform smoldering egg. I don't know, it's like slow for, I don't know, a Delver deck or something. Flying! And whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, Ash Mouth's Dragon deals two damage to any targets, a 4-4. Ask a commander player and they'll be like, oh yeah, I can get that off, no problem. Hell, the, the first spell that they play is probably going to be 7 mana. Easy. Easy peasy. Face is fam forever. Thank you very much. The Par- the Pardic Dragon. Pardic Dragon. Red, red, four generic for a 4-4 four, four dragon with flying. Pay red. It gets plus 1, plus 0 until end of turn. You can also suspend it for- It's not too bad. 2 mana, 2 turns. Uh, whenever an opponent casts a spell, if Party Dragon is suspended, that player may put. Oh no! <laughs> that player may put a time counter on Party Dragon. Oh God! This will never come off suspend. Well, I, I, at first I thought I was going to disqualify this card. Like this card is easy. Red, red. This is going to come out sooner than the actual casting cost. Yeah, basically I spoke too soon. It, it definitely was. This card will never come off Suspend. If you're playing this in Commander, I mean, it's basically an Exile for forever. Soul Ring. Tap my Soul Ring. Mana, uh, mana Crypt. No, Mana Crypt is zero mana. Soul Ring. Mana Crypt. Grim Monolith. Play Creature. Add four Suspend counters. Go. Yeah, this, this card will be suspended all night. You could leave it on Suspend, like, uh, beyond the game. Like, the game is over, keep Pardic Dragon suspended, and it will be suspended there for forever. I, I predict that su Pardic Dragon would never come off suspend. It's almost like a death sentence to play its uh, suspend cost. Next up, let's take um, Arthur's Millennium Calendar. The Millennia! Oh no, this is not the Millennium. Millennium Calendar. The one mana, whenever you untap one or more permanents during your untap step, put that many time counters on the Millennium Calendar. Then you pay two, tap double the number of time counters on the Millennium Calendar. And when there are 1,000 or more time counters on the Millennium Calendar, sacrifice it and each opponent loses 1,000 life. The funny thing is, this doesn't even kill people with infinite life. It just kills people with, like, a lot of life but not infinite. It's not even a, like a, a guaranteed win condition if you can pull this whole thing off. Okay, next super chat. Let's take a look at uh, Sean Jackson's Restore Balance. How long does it take to pull this off? Oh, six turns. Pay whites. Be, and, you'll, and by turn seven, each player chooses a number of lands they control equal to the number of lands controlled by the player who controls the fewest, then sacrifices the rest. Players sacrifice creatures and discard cards the same way. Nor this is normally supposed to be played early when one player just has nothing in play. So it's like a it's like a one-sided board wipe. This is going to be a lot less useful by turn seven. Like, if you have nothing in play by turn 7, you're probably losing, too. Uh, not the Zilla, Ironroot Tree Folk. I don't know if this is that slow of a card. This is just, or is it? Oh, I'm thinking of a different card. <laughs> 5 mana for a 3-5. This is just a sad card. I wouldn't say it's slow. I mean, it is slow. It's not as slow as the other cards on this list. Okay, uh, Alpha Miss Prime with the Silent Arbiter. What makes this slow? Four mana, one five. No more than one creature can attack each combat. No more than one creature can block each combat. Now, the token player with a bunch of one ones. Oh my god, this is gonna take forever to close out this game. Also, the creature, also, the all the opponents against the token deck that has a million one ones. It's like, oh my god, this is going to take forever to get through all that. This will just completely slow the game down to a standstill. The Silent Arbiter. You, so you basically have to kill off the person with the Silent Arbiter. Or attack with one singular gigantic trampling creature. 
Make it a 100-100 with trample. I guess that's the, that's the key. That's the skill around here. Bacon Catbug, another stream, another illusionary mask. Oh, God, please no. No, God, please no! Why, why is this, is this really a slow card? Or is it just because it takes forever for me to read the damn thing? Okay, two-man artifact, X. You may put a creature card with converted mana cost X or less from your hand onto the battlefield face down as a zero-one creature. Put X mass counters on that creature. Activate this ability only any time you could cast a sorcery. The creature's controller may turn the creature face up any time he or she could cast an instant by removing all mass counters from it. This effect ends if the creature is turned face up. I don't even know what I read around here. I've read this card a million times. This is not even the oracle text. This is if you okay, so X choose a creature card in your hand. Uh, whose mana cost would be could be paid by some uh, some amount of it or all of the mana you spent on it. I guess the point is this card's a slow card because you don't even know how it works. You're gonna spend a lot of time on gather trying to figure it out. I'm gonna barely count it. Toilet Ducks River Delta. If there are any depletion counters on River Delta, it does not untap during your untap step. Oh God. <laughs> At the beginning of your upkeep, remove a depletion counter from River Delta. Tap at a blue man of your mana pool. Put a depletion counter on River Delta. Hold on, how does this... Okay, tap at a black to your mana pool. Put a depletion counter on River Delta. So if there are any depletion counters on River Delta, it does not... Un oh, I see. So you tap to add the mana. This is a very slow land. Slower than any land. You tap to add a mana. You put the counter on it. And then it's like a stun counter. At your upkeep, you remove the stun counter. But it's still tapped. That's it. So, um... And then next turn, you get to untap it. Complete crap card. If you want to slow your games down, everyone has to rule zero that all the lands are basically river deltas. Comes to play, You have to put depletion counters on them. You have to remove depletion counters from them. That's, pro that's probably the best way to slow down commander games. That's how you do it. Kagan, what do you got for us? Um, Arvanox, the Mind Flail. It's very expensive, so it's fast. If you have the cards, then enable it before you can cast it. It is... Okay, it is seven mana. If it isn't, it isn't a creature, unless you control three or more permanents you don't own, that'll take forever. And at the beginning of your end step, exile the bottom card of each opponent's library face down. For as long as those cards remain exiled, you may look at them, you may cast permanent spells from among them, and you may spend mana as though it were mana of any color to cast those spells. Yeah, so we, we basically spent seven mana on... Just, it's more enchantment than creature. Like, the ba it's basically an enchantment that says you can play your opponent's cards from the bottom of their library... Uh, and then if you have three of them, then it turns into a 9-9. It's just weirdly worded that it's a creature in the first place. Okay, next up. Let's take... David says, apparently he's also accepting Takes Forever to Read, which is why people are submitting Tackle Mech. No, one time. It doesn't have to be Take Forever to Read. If it takes forever to read, not good enough. Take Forever to Understand. That might count. But I might buzz you as well. Okay, Arcanus Ultra with Shara... <laughs> Oh God, Shahrazad. Yeah, that you're not wrong. Actual slowest card in Magic: The Gathering. Well, it depends. Maybe no. You know what? You're right. This has to be. So it's a, bit, it's a two mana. You start another game with cards left in your deck, and then with those cards left, whoever wins only they like. No, sorry, the losers. Players play a Magic sub game using their libraries as their deck. Each player who doesn't win the sub game loses half their life. That's interesting in, com in Commander. So if you don't lose the life, everyone loses. If you won't win the game, so there can only be one winner. It's basically like doming everyone for 20 damage, or something to that effect. Yeah, Shower's Odd, super incredibly slow, slow card. We have a huge super chat from Emperor. Thank you very much for your super chat. Permeating mass. It made the Eldritch Moon purely so damn slow because everything was turning into it. 
It's the only pre-release I went to where I ended with one win, one loss, and three draws, and still got top eight because of mass. This is a really funny spirit card. Yeah, it's a one green, one three spirit. Whenever permeating mass deals combat damage to a creature, that creature becomes a copy of permeating mass. So it's like an infection that goes gets everywhere. We're all will be permeating mass. This all should be one. Should be. Someone's got to make a meme with permeating mass. All will be one, and then it's just a picture of this permeating mass thing. It's coming after you, and then you're going to turn into exactly it. And then it's over. Ah, oh, funny thing. Shellen says, it's banned for being slow. Oh, yeah, you mean the, the, the Shahrazad? Yeah, I guess so. It's banned for being slow. It's also banned for just being stupid. Uh, okay, next up, let's take one. Take one from Christopher B. Simic Ascendancy. I would have chosen Jeskai Ascendancy. What does the Simic Ascendancy do? Blue green, enchantment, pay three, put a counter on target creature you control. Whenever one or more counters are put on a creature you control, put that many growth counters on Simic Ascendancy. And at the beginning of your upkeep, if Simic Ascendancy has 20 or more growth counters on it, you win the game. Congratulations. Not nearly as slow as the other uh, I win the game cards, but uh, slow nonetheless. Toads is asking, do you do Kerosene? Um, one, uh, Keras, is that an actual card? Care, you mean the suggestion was Soul Talisman? Okay, uh, oh no, we, we did the Mox suspend card, but we didn't do the Soul. So, like, if you want to balance Soul Ring, you just give it suspend. Suspend three? No problem. Have Soul Ring by turn four. No big deal. It will not break the game. Hence why it's legal and modern and sees absolutely no play. Here you go. You want, you want, but we don't, we're not even looking for a budget soul ring out here. And it's still like a dollar. I wonder, does actual soul ring cost less? Okay, this thing costs a dollar. Soul ring. No, that's not soul ring. Okay, this rightfully. Holy crap! What is going on here? Does Soul Ring need a reprint or something? Oh, in this case, this one's cheap. I'm like looking at all these cards. This like this one's fifteen dollars. This one's twenty six dollars. Like, what happened to Soul Ring? There's got to be cheaper Soul Ring. The OG Soul Ring's got to be cheap, or one of these. What's the price? Okay, buy for a dollar. Whew, dollar fifty. I was getting a little concerned here that Soul Ring spiked for no damn reason. And if it did. Well, you can get the budget version, the, the Soul Talisman. All right, so it's more expensive by 50 cents. Next super chat, we've got... Oh, sorry, Emperor, that was sniped. We already did the uh, hex. Well, I don't know. I wouldn't say about sniped. Probably we did it before you even showed up. Helix Pinnacle. All right, so we'll donate this one to Mark Zilla's Ominous Seas. How ominous. It is a blue, one generic enchantment. Whenever you draw a card, put a foreshadow counter on Ominous Seas. Remove eight foreshadow counters from Ominous Seas. Create an 8-8 eight, eight blue Kraken creature token. But if you're impatient, you can just cycle this thing for two mana. How is Karn liberated us? Oh, you want to talk about... Oh, maybe the ultimate. Karn liberated. King Ginger. Congratulations for making it to a show. I've never seen you here around here before, King Ginger. Welcome. Seven mana, six loyalty, uh, Karn. So, it, I, it's got these other abilities that are not relevant, but this one can drag the game on for a long time. Minus 14. Restart the game. Leave it in exile. All non-aura permanent cards exiled with Karn liberated. Then put those cards onto the battlefield under your control. So you restart the game and boom, you'll have a bunch of, like, lands, creatures, whatever. Maybe you'll win. Once I saw someone ultimate this thing and lose i was like why are you even restarting the game i'm losing here you have all the man in the world you've got a car and liberated i can do nothing about and they're like okay i can restart the game i think i can win from here and i was like no you can't and i raced them and i won it was great uh okay next up uh okay emperor is going to redeem themselves with uh, curse of the cabal
Curse of the Cabal is a black nine generic sorcery. <laughs> That's slow by itself. Target player sacrifices half the permanence they control rounded down. It's got suspend for four mana. At the beginning of each player's upkeep, if Curse of the Cabal is suspended, that player may sacrifice a permanent. If they do, put two, two time counters on the Curse of the Cabal. Like, who... Basically, if when this thing's about to come off suspend, no one's going to want to lose half their permanence, so they just might as well sack... They could just sack a token! Does it say you can, You just have to sacrifice a permanent? All right, I'll, goodbye clue token. Goodbye clue treasure token. We've got plenty of these things hanging around. All right, next up, let's take a look at Alan Tremaine with uh, Watcher in the Water. That sounds creepy. Sounds like we need a restraining order against this person. The Watcher in the Water! And I would put a restraining order on this thing. Very disgusting. Okay, five mana for a 9-9. Nine, nine. Okay, what's the catch? Enter the battlefield with nine stun counters on it! Nine stun counters. Whenever you draw a card during an opponent's turn, create a 1-1 one, one blue tentacle creature token. Oh, so it's like more of an enchantment than a creature. When a tentacle you control dies, untap up to one target Kraken, which could be this, and put a stun counter on up to one target non-land permanent. Ah, so you, your Krakens die. If your, sorry, if your tentacles die, you untap your Krakens? Is that what I'm looking at here? I guess that's how it works. You have to get them to die or this thing don't untap. Uh, next up, let's take a look at... Is that freebie or is that a super chat? I don't, I, I don't I think it was a super chat. Okay, Kagan. We've got, I really like it, but replicating ring. What's well, going to replicate itself? That's a computer virus. It's a three mana snow artifact. Tapped at one mana of any color. At the beginning of your upkeep, put a night counter on replicating ring. Then if it has eight or more night counters on it, remove all of them and create eight colorless snow artifact tokens named Replicating Ring with tap, add one man of any color. So it's really slow. No, it's actually just ridiculously slow in the first place. So you get, at the beginning of your upkeep, so 11 turns on turn 11, or I guess by turn 10, if you ramp this thing out with Soul Ring for tu on turn 2, uh, you'll have a million Replicating Rings. But that's it. It's only going to get pulled off once. Unless you can get a bunch of extra turns or something. Uh, P uh, I says, or P C L says, hey Nikachu, the other week you asked if people actually play with the AI cards. We over at Robo Rose Rosewater Discord actually do drafts and cubes such as tabletop sim all the time. That is sick. I like to hear that. Cool stuff. Okay, next up, uh, Blackbird's Jungle Delver. Oh yeah, this thing. That's a merfolk, isn't it? Yeah, it's a, mer it's a one mana one one, and on, by turn four, I'm gonna give it plus one, plus one. You just wait. You just wait until I get to turn four, then it's all over. I'll be as strong as a Savannah Lions. I'll even have more toughness too. Show that Savannah Lions. With proliferate, the ring works. You know what? If you put your heart and soul into it, anything works in this game. Just need to put enough heart and soul into it. Okay, Sean Jackson with Azor's uh, Elocutors? Elocutors? I don't know what the hell this is. Okay, 5 mana for a 3-5 human advisor. At the beginning of your upkeep, put a filibuster counter on Azor's El Elocutors. Whatever that is. If, uh, then if Azor's Elocutors has five or more filibuster counters on it, you win the game! Congratulations! Whenever a source deals damage to you, remove a filibuster counter from Azor's Elocutors. Oh, I see. That's the idea. So, so we have to wait one upkeep, then proliferate five times, and then we win on the spot. Otherwise, as we can't take any damage from anywhere, uh, we're never getting them filibuster counters on there. We just have to punch... The Senate, and nothing ever gets passed, effectively. Okay, extravagant replication is fun in Commander, especially if you clone it. Extravagant, but is it slow? 
Okay, we have six man enchantment at the beginning of your upkeep. Create a token that's a copy of another target non-land permanent you control. Slow but steady wins the race. Hello, Q Tours? Is that how it's pronounced? Hello? Hello, Q Tours. I'm going to just trust you on that one. Uh, next up, Abzo's Hokori Dust Drinker. Hokori Dust. That's terrible. Drink this dust. I guess it does want dry. You know, human beings, like 90% water or something like that. This thing's 90% dust. It's a white, white, two generic, two, two spirit. Lands don't untap during their controller's untap steps. That will slow the game down. And at the beginning of each player's upkeep, that player untaps a land they control. It will slow the game down to a standstill. It's basically the spirit version of Winter Orb. It's a Winter Orb thing. All right, hear the music. That means it's time to thank our sponsors. It's my favorite segment of the entire show. It's what helps pay, t gives me some financial incentive. Is there a new deal of the week this week or is it the same deal? You'll have like a mere hours. You have mere hours to take advantage of Zendikar set singles, 15% off. Get them fetch lands and iconic creatures and planeswalkers, even Stoneforge Mystic if you need it. And don't forget, you can go, uh, oh yeah, the Fusion Open, April 27th to 28th, 2024. I will be there. They're going to have a modern open. It's in Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada. Uh, I'll be there on Saturday and Sunday. Don't know what I'm going to do on Sunday. They have a Pioneer open on Sunday. Maybe I'm going to play some EDH. I have an EDH deck. Why don't I play with it for once? And on the 27th, they have a modern open. I will definitely play that. Get your uh, Outlaws of Thunder Junction singles. They're probably not spoiled yet. But when they are, you know where to get them from. You get them from FusionGamingOnline.com. And don't forget to use coupon code Nikachu at checkout to get 5% off all your purchases. We're also going to thank Mana Traders, the premier place to rent Magic cards online. Why would you want to rent cards on Magic Online? Because it's cheaper if you want to play a lot of decks. If you're afraid of your cards getting banned, they're, it's a ban list saver. Your cards don't get banned. Mana Traders cards get banned. You can support the channel using my Mana Traders link in the description below. Or save 10% off your first two months using coupon code Nikachu underscore ZUE. It's as simple as that. Oh, so you can play Commander on Magic Online. You can't do that on Arena. You show me we're on Arena that you can play Commander. And uh, I'll show you nothing. Okay, next up. Let's take a card from... I could have swore I saw someone new here. Fiel! Planar Portal! Actually, now I recognize your avatar. Six mana artifact. Pay six, tap switch your library for a card, and put that card into your hand, then shuffle your library. Just incredibly mana inefficient. Very, very mana inefficient. If you want to tutor, you can tutor every turn. Okay. The planar portal is up there. All right, King Ginger. First time viewer. Svela Ice Shaper. We got a three mana two for Troll. A troll warrior, I should say. Pay three, tap, create a colorless snow artifact token named Icy Manlith with tap add one mana of any color. What makes this card slow? Okay, we do have an, the ability for six, eight mana, tap, look at the top four cards of your library. You may cast a spell from among them without paying its mana cost. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. I don't really consider this a slow card. Like, they got... It's a it's a two four for three mana. Has abilities immediately if you really want them. I'm disqualifying this thing. You're regular here, so it's easier to disqualify your cards. <laughs> um, okay, who hasn't got a card yet? Let's look at Majra's Dark Steel Rector. Reactor, sorry. This is a four mana indestructible artifact. At the beginning of your upkeep, you may put a charge counter on Dark Steel Reactor. When it has 20 or more charge counters on it, you win the game. Ah, oh, another, another victory. Well done. After, by turn, what? Turn, no, oh, like turn 24. It's like $9. So I guess people are cheating with this card big time. It has to be Proliferate. Did Prolif Proliferate even exist at this point? I don't know when they invented Proliferate. Certainly made a lot of garbage cards playable, that's for sure. Uh, Erlen says, have we done the extreme... Ext oh, this has got to be an uncard, right? Extremely slow zombie. I'll do it just for you, Erland. Just for you! 
but I'm doing it just for you. We have a black one generic 3-3, three, three. last strike. This creature deals combat damage after creatures without last strike. Bacon cat pug with uh, the tackle maggot. You maggot. Okay, four mana. Okay, screw, screw the ancient scripture. Uh, we're gonna look, I'm gonna read the oracle text. At the beginning of your upkeep of enchanted creatures controller, put a minus zero minus one counter on that creature. When the enchanted creature dies, that creature's controller chooses a creature that Tackle Maggot could enchant. If the player does, return Tackle Maggot to the battlefield under your control attached to that creature. If they don't, return Tackle Maggot to the battlefield under your control as a non-aura enchantment. It loses enchant creature and it gains. At the beginning of that player's upkeep, Tackle Maggot deals one damage to that player. Oh yeah, it's this, it's that aura that just slowly kills things. So uh, at the beginning of the upkeep, you it gets like minus zero minus one it says one turn at a time we're gonna wear down your toughness completely useless this is a very slow card super outrageously slow okay christopher b says fun fact when you proliferate something you proliferate each counter kind it has don't give yourself more energy or experience if you're poisoned that's right don't do that you have the choice don't you Hold on when you proliferate each counter kind it has when you proliferate something, you pr you proliferate each counter kind it has. Oh, I see. So, what you're saying is someone's poisoned, you increase the counter on it. I thought you choose which counters go up. Maybe I don't know the rules to this thing very well. Next super chat coming from Steve Cooper. We got Warp World. And of course, Steve Cooper will donate to two people. Cause that Steve Cooper is a giver. Okay, Warp World, uh, eight mana, sorcery. Each player shuffles all permanents they own into the library, then reveals that many cards from the top of their library. Each player puts all artifact creatures and lands revealed this way onto the battlefield, then does the same for enchantment cards, then puts all cards revealed this way that weren't put onto the battlefield on the bottom of their library. There's actually another one that's like worse than this. It's like everyone puts their permanents in a pile, and I think everyone just chooses a permanent from that pile and then slowly starts putting them into play. Something to that effect. Something like that. You used to be able to choose, but they changed it? Really? When did the change come to proliferate? I gotta get up to date on that ruling. It usually doesn't matter to me, but maybe it will. Sometimes people proliferate. There's something called Yogmoth in modern. That, that thing proliferates. Well, I'm thinking of Thieves Auction. Let's look at that one. I think that card takes forever to resolve. This is seven mana. Sorcery, set aside all cards in play. Starting with you, each player chooses one of those cards set aside and puts it into play tapped under their control. Repeat this process. And if there's like a million permanents in play, this is gonna take forever. It's like choosing players to be on your team in school. Repeat this process until all those cards have been chosen. You're all team captains, choosing cards to take. Okay, next um, freebie, we'll give it to... It just slows the game down by making people read it. There's a lot of cards like that. Uh, Dem with the Transcendent Master. Those level up cards. Yeah, some level up cards take abs... I mean, they take so long, you might as well not even try. Three mana for a 3-3. Three, three. And you can level up... At least it's one mana. I think it, there's worse. And then if you pay, you sink six men into this thing, you get yourself a uh, a six sin, a six six life linking creature. And then if you put another six men into it, uh, its transcended master becomes indestructible. Okay, we have one more freebie to give away. Dinglebag's like, I got no card yet. Lord of Shatter. Yeah, this I think this one's worse. This is a level up card with like almost no benefit. Okay, so the Transcendent Master took you 12 mana to get like a reasonable good ultimate. You know, you're a life linking, you're 9 9, you're indestructible. Then we go to Lord of Shatter Skull Pass, 3 3. You have to spend 2 mana to level it up. So after you've leveled, you've spent 10 mana on this thing, it's only a 6 6. And then when you spend 12 mana, uh, whenever it attacks, it deals six damage to each creature defending player controls. Maybe not that bad, but at 12 mana, 
I mean, you might as well just hard cast Blasphemous Act, as far as I'm concerned. Just hard cast the Blasphemous Act. Dark Star, sure. Uh, Bilbo Birthday Celebrant. This is the one where you need a bunch of life, right? Okay, three mana for a two, three. If you gain life, you gain that much life plus one instead. Those are helping you along here. It's like hardened skills for life gain. Uh, five mana tap, exile Bilbo. Search your library for any number of creature cards, put them onto the battlefield, then shuffle. Activate only if you have 11, 111 or more life. Okay, David Grove says, change to proliferate was worth a spark. Compare reminder text on both printings of Throne of Geth. Oh, okay. So Throne of Geth, uh, okay, I'll take a look at that afterwards. Okay, Toilet Doc says, the confusing rules text on Space Bellerin. Bellerin. Which is surprisingly tournament legal and not an uncard. I know, this card, like, <laughs> the uncards that... Or I should say, Magic the Gathering cards that are legal. We should have maybe a show like that. Cards that are legal, but they look like uncards. I mean, it sort of is an uncard, but it's completely legal. Look how stupid this is. He's got like a, a helmet on. You can play this in Legacy. Okay, four mana for a three loyalty Jace with Space Sculptor. Space Bellerin divides the battlefield into Alpha, Beta, and Gamma sectors. If a creature isn't assigned to a sector, it's control... It's controller assigned. It's assigns it to one. Opponents uh, assign first. Plus one. Creatures in each sector can be blocked this turn only by creatures in the same sector. And then minus one. Put a plus one plus one counter on each creature in the sector of your choice. Minus five. Destroy all creatures in the sector of your choice. So basically, creatures only attack and block in sectors. This is how it works around here. Uh, someone two four C with musician. Is this a real card? Jeremy says he loves listening to me on the way to work. You're welcome. I love I love hearing that feedback as well, Jeremy. Enjoy your... your. I'm assuming you're driving. I have been given some feedback whenever you guys hear the police siren effect. You don't like that? <laughs> because all of a sudden you actually think that there is a siren. I should, I should pull out the fire truck sound effect. The ambulance sound effect. The police that makes it w the worst for people driving to work. All right, musician, three mana for one three. Commutative upkeep of one. Tap, put a music counter on target creature. If it doesn't have at the beginning of your upkeep, destroy this creature unless you pay one for each music counter on it. It gains that ability. What? What the hell am I reading here? Tap, put a music counter on target creature. At the beginning of your upkeep, destroy this creature unless you pay one for each music counter on it. Oh, so you just give it an upkeep cost, effectively, but not even commutative upkeep. So, so basically, you have to wait, you have to give it a counter, then give it another. You have to give it more counters than they have mana, or enough counters that it's like not worth it for them to pay for it, and they just won't pay the tax, and they'll just let that thing die. Never heard of this thing. Uh, yeah, it's very slowly kills. It may not even kill. If your opponent can keep up with mana, it may not kill it at all. <laughs> it's possible it'll never happen. All right, John, the meandering tower shell. The big turtle, my pet card when I started, as a lot of people. Five mana for a five nine with island walk. But when it attacks, you have to exile it. All attack. This is the slow fist. It's like. I'm slowly coming for you, and then, boop, you exile it. Return to the battlefield under your control, tapped and attacking at the beginning of the declare attack step on your next turn. It's not even impressive. It's f five mana for five power. Sad and pathetic. So hold on, you attack, it's gone next, it's gone this turn. It comes back next turn. But then, so what, are you are you dealing damage once every three turns? Is that how this works around here? Because, hold on, you, you attack, it's gone. Next turn, comes into play, deals damage. Next turn, you untap. Oh, no, it's once every second turn. Okay, it's once every second turn. David Howler says, I will not stop suggesting regenerations restored. Uh, regenerations restored this is a two mana of enchantment vanishing 12 
Whenever one or more time counters are removed from regenerations restored, scry one and you gain one life. Uh, and then if regenerations restored has no time counters on it, exile it. When you do, take an extra turn after this one. This is the slowest extra turn card of all time. By the time you pull off an extra turn, I mean, there's no turns left in the game. Dev for fun says, damn it, I thought it was every turn, but a tap ability for one tax to one creature. If it was tapped, put one counter in every creature, and then it'd be interesting. Yeah. Are you talking I think you're talking about the uh the musician. We're getting some neat cards that we never heard of today. You're looking to make a really slow commander deck. Today is the today was your day. It's for the play group that says no one's allowed to win until turn 10. It has to go that long. <laughs> the slow, slow magic gathering chat. Nikachu, I put up a super chat earlier, but I had the wrong name, uh, the name wrong. I put becoming a nexus, but it should be nexus of becoming. Okay, let's take a look at it right now then. Nexus of becoming. Okay, six mana artifact. At the beginning of combat on your turn, you draw a card. Then if you may exile an artifact or creature card from your hand. If you do create a token that's a copy of the exiled card, except it's a 3-3 golem artifact creature in addition to its other types. Think of combat on your turn, draw a card. How is this that bad? You pay six mana. I don't even think this is that slow. So basically what it is, is it's six mana and you can exile creatures every single turn to freely make a 3-3 creature. I don't, I think that's pretty good. I mean, it's not the fastest, it's slow because it's six mana. Come on, six mana. We gotta up the ante here. We have to up the ante, Dark Star Show. We need seven, eight, nine mana. And it, we at least immediately got something. Six mana for a three, three. Next turn, that's if you get combat on your turn. Unfortunately, it's only your turn. If you do it every other turn, then it would be even more impressive. Just have to take extra turns around here. Um, Turiot with As Foretold. This card honestly doesn't see play because it is too slow. It's three mana. At the beginning of your upkeep, you can put a time counter on As Foretold. That won't be until turn four. Uh, once each turn, you may pay zero rather than pay the mana cost for a spell you cast with mana value X or less, where X is the number of time counters on As Foretold. It literally sees like no play. Because it's just way too damn slow. Alright, if I got four, five, or six mana in front of me, I don't need this thing to give me, like, free cards. And by the way, by the time we get to, like, turn three, I probably already played my zero drops anyway. Uh, okay, next up. Let's take a look at John's mean... Uh, oh, no, sorry. We did that one already. King Ginger! Sadistic Sacrament. This is that, uh, it like removes cards from the deck. Card, three mana, sorcery. Oh yeah, kicker of seven. <laughs> Search target player's library for up to three cards, exile them. That player shuffles their library. Now, if it was kicked, instead search that player's library for up to 15 cards, exile them. That player shuffles their library. I'm gonna kill you by taking out all your win conditions. All I need to do is get to 10 mana. Do Chen Fred? Where's Chen Fred's? No card, chance encounter. We've definitely heard of that one before. Some flaming four mana enchantment. If whenever you win, if whenever you would win a coin flip, uh, put a luck counter on chance encounter. At the beginning of your upkeep, if chance encounter has ten or more luck counters on it, you win the game. So statistically, actually, this card is a beating. So best case scenario is whenever you win a coin flip. So you need to win ten. In a, if you win 10 in a row, it takes 10 flips. But statistically, it should take you 20 flips. And then if you get, like, unlucky variants, it could be 30 flips. You'd be flipping those coins all day around here. You gotta get yourself a rigged coin. I don't think mana alone makes something slow. You can cheat a lot of stuff on turn 4. The problem is stuff that needs to be ac uh, active for multiple turns. No, I, I, I hear you. I hear you. 50-50 chance if you flip, flip 20 coins. Uh, sure. I have, I have a feeling some stat uh, statisticians would disagree with that, assess that assessment. 
I mean, I guess, yeah. The odds of getting 10 flips after 20 coin flips. Oh, uh, it's, it's statistics are weird. It's like, what are the odds of getting 10 heads and 10 tails if you flip 20 coins? Is it 50-50? What's the confidence interval for this thing? So, uh, it's like, yeah, it's like cooking my brain at the moment. I can't think that. If any statisticians out there can like answer this question, it, what are the odds of getting 10 heads, 10 tails if we flip 20 coins? Because I'm not sure it's going to be 50-50. Yeah, one coin flip is 50-50, but if you flip 20 coins, all of a sudden things get weird. Things get very, very weird. I'm not smart enough for that. I'm smart enough to know that we're- it's wrong. I'm pretty sh I'm pretty sure it's wrong. Like, it's not 50- like, if you flip 20 co coins, it's not, not gonna- <laughs> 51, no, well, yeah, there's some people who will remind me, like, they're not- it's not- the coin flips are not truly 50-50. It's like 51% for tails, 49% for heads, but that's not the- that's not the deal. Yeah, because the heads- no, the thing is, like- Okay, whatever. I'm not gonna go into statistics here. It's okay. Okay, with Star, with a Watcher of Hours. Love your avatar, Star. I love it. It's got a lot of energy in that avatar. Okay, six mana for a 6-6 six, six Sphinx. Flying Ward 3. And whenever you uh, remove a time counter from Watcher of Hours while it's exiled, you surveil one. Wow, actually, that's pretty good. So you actually get a benefit to suspend this damn thing. It's got suspend for two mana. So two mana, so we're getting this thing out by eight, by turn eight. It'll take forever to get it. It was funny, it might be worth it just cast this thing on turn six. Probably. So you actually want to suspend it so that you can surveil while you're while you're at it. Cracker, three slow cards. Well, I'll only take one of them. Tyranno. Tyrannosaurus Rex. What is Tyranno? Drowsing Tyranno? Defender. As long as you control a creature with power 4 greater, Drowsing Tyranno can attack as though it didn't have Defender. Ah. So you need that creature. It's actually possible this creature will never attack. Ever. At all. Emperor. Thank you very much for the super chat. You've got uh, Rakdos, the, sh the showstopper. Especially against the tokens. Okay, we got a 6 mana 6-6 six, six demon flying trample when Rakdos the showstopper enters the battlefield. Flip a coin. Again, more coin flipping shenanigans. Uh, for each creature that isn't a demon. Oh, that's interesting. So you have to add this with that chance encounter and we're in business. Uh, devil or imp, destroy each creature whose coin comes up tails. Oh my god. So... <laughs> So it enters the battlefield, we are flipping a coin for every damn creature in play. Except the demons, devils, or imps. Yeah, what about someone who has like an infinite number of creatures? Like, how are you going to deal with that? It's like, you know what, I'll just have my Rakdos showstopper like blow itself up. And uh, we don't have to do the, we don't have to do the damn thing. Okay, we got, we got, okay, old boy came with some statistical knowledge. It's a 58.8% chance of hitting at least 10 heads among 20 coin flips. No, but the question is, what is the chance of hitting 10 heads and 10 tails? All right, old boy will go back to the uh, hy hyper geometric calculator and give us an answer. But that's not a bad answer, too. That's not a bad answer. Okay, so uh, 58, if we flip 20, so we go going back to the chance encounter. If we flip 20 coins, you have a si basically a 60% chance of winning the game. Now go back and figure out what's exactly 10, exactly 10 tails. Because we used to, we thought it was, well, no, I wouldn't say we, chat thought it was 50-50. Um, I don't think, oh, I think we did the Millennium Calendar already. Okay, Proto Pond with the Magic Mirror. Magic Mirror sounds like it would be a card. Also sounds like it would be something from Disney. The Magic Mirror is a 9 mana legendary artifact. It costs one less to cast for each instant or sorcery card in your graveyard. You have no maximum hand size. 
And at the beginning of your upkeep, put a knowledge counter on magic mirror, then draw a card for each knowledge counter on the magic mirror. So what you're telling me is this card literally does nothing the turn it comes into play. And then I have to wait every single turn. My turn, in fact, to get any benefit out of this. I feel very sad for the person who has to cast this thing for an entire nine mana. Because what exactly does slowest card mean? We can just take a look at the cards here. Just slow to do its thing. Imagine playing this thing on turn nine and does nothing. And you have to wait next turn to draw a singular card. How bad would that feel? Okay, next super chat we've got from Geyer. Uh, Hythonia the Cruel. Hythonia the Cruel, a 6 mana 4 6 Gorgon with Death Touch. Monstrosity 8. Uh, when it becomes monstrous, destroy all non Gorgon creatures. You gotta just have to make your Gorgon deck, I guess. Just gotta play your Gorgon. Nikachu, I'm sorry, I don't understand what the slowest means. I'm sl <laughs> slow. No, it's, it's okay. It's all good. Your suggestions are not that bad. Here, take. Let's take another one from Emperor. The Lighthouse Chronologist, for example. And it's, it's, there's multiple ways of interpreting this. Like this one, this costs what, six mana, then an additional eight mana? Oh god. Okay, now this card, if anyone's played against it, you first have to level it up to seven, which is a feat in itself, and then you're gonna slow down the entire game. Because at the beginning of each end step, if it's not your turn, you take a turn. So basically, you're taking all the, the other, all the turns, and your opponents are just watching you play Magic. It becomes a solitaire game. Every other turn, that is. It's like there's four of you at the table! Uh, next up, let's take a look at... Who hasn't got a card yet? Maybe I think everyone's got a card. Okay, Jacob says Giant Turtle. What? Okay, three mana for a 2-4. Giant Turtle may not attack if it attacked during your last turn. Oh, is that is that just a thing of the turtles? Like, it attacks only once? And what is going on? This is a giant turtle. There is a tiny person here with an axe. Oh, there's another person here. You woke the turtle up. Don't wake up Donatello. Donatello needs his beauty sleep. Chris says, I haven't got a card yet. Have you done Maze's End? We have not... Mazes end, and it was the battlefield tapped, as all the mazes do. Sorry, sorry, not, uh, it's not Aze, the gates. All the gates come into play tapped. Very slow lands themselves. Tapped at a colorless. Pay three, tap, return mazes end to its owner's hand. Research, search your library for a gate card. Put it onto the battlefield, then shuffle your library. And if you control ten or more gate cards with different names, you win the game. So, but it's not so easy to, like... Put a gate in play, then also put Maze's End in play. You have to alternate per turn. Put Maze's End in play, next turn, return Maze's End back to your hand. If you have a gate in your hand, play a gate, but like, uh, it's a very, very slow combo. It is, a, what is it? It's technically a 10 turn combo to for victory. Arcane Soldier says, Nikachu Krekker did a bad translation. This card was meant to be Bane's Invoker. Okay, let's look at Bane's Invoker. Bane's Invoker, two mana for a 2-2. Two, two. With Wind Walk for eight mana. Up to two target creatures. Each get plus two, plus two, and gain flying until end of turn. Yeah, I'm going to play the Bane's Invoker in play. It's a 2-2 two, two for two mana. But you just wait. Just wait, because one day when I get up to eight mana, all of a sudden I can buff up all. I'm going to buff up every single one of my... Two creatures. Two creatures, yeah. Oh gosh, eight mana for plus two, plus two, and flying. And don't be laughing at that flying. They'll fly over you. I have so many super chats. This is insane. Uh, Bacon Catbug with pondering my winter orb. Ah, you love your winter orbs, don't you? You get this out quick and slow the game down fast. As long as winter orb is untapped, players can't untap more than one land during each of their untapped steps. Wow, this is a combo with Urza, isn't it? So as long as it's untapped, you guys are screwed. But then on my turn, uh, like at the end of, I don't know, the last player's turn, I just tap this thing for mana, and then I get all my mana back. 
I'm sure this is not something I've just invented. That's insane. Oh, Winter Orb is... Winter Orb is broken! You probably don't even need to always play it with uh, Urza either. Okay, next up. Yeah, J Jace despises Winter Orb. The Razor Boomerang. Oops. Razor Boomerang is a three mana equipment. A equip creature. You have to equip it. Pay three. Then pay another two. Attach it. Then you have to unattach it to deal one damage to a creature or player. And in, and in like 40 turns, I'll have attacked you to death. Those kind of Urza players are a literal s Satan. That's right. And I'll be one of them. Uh, we did our Dark Depths already. Uh, Unstoppable Rob. Uh, last Stand Matt. The Dark Steel Monolith. It, eight mana for an indestructible creature. Now, once each turn, you can pay zero rather than pay the mana cost for a colorless spell you cast from your hand. Honestly, not really a slow card. It's just eight mana. It's just expensive, but not slow. It's like the moment. It's it ba like what is it? It's basically like an as foretold for very for your colorless spells, and it's all free. It's like it's like eight man. It's like a permanent show and tell on the battlefield. Um, okay, next super chat. Let's take from Pacers fan forever. Static orb or stasis or static orb? I'll take. I guess I'll take stasis. Although to be honest, I think it's not even going to be around for very. I mean, if if you build around the card correctly, yeah, everything will be slow. If you build around it incorrectly. You're just not going to be able to pay for this damn thing. Two mana. Everyone skips their untapped steps. And at the beginning of your upkeep, sacrifice stasis unless you pay a blue. Okay, now it's only super chats from here on out. Unless people get sniped by accident or the card gets disqualified. Elgot, a good thing. This is not even real. Okay, six mana enchantment. Spells and abilities you control can't destroy, exile, target, or cause you to sacrifice said card or a good thing. Uh, at the beginning of your upkeep, double your life total. Then if you have 1,000 or more life... <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know what you want here. You want the life or do you not want the life? This is funny. Oh, I like this. Yeah, you're happy. Then you're like a little less happy. And the happiness is starting to get awkward. And then all of a sudden you're dead. It's like... Okay, I want the life gain. You double your life total. Okay, I'm at 80. I'm at 160. I'm at 320. You'll never kill me. Oh, wait a minute. Now I'm at 640. Oh, no. I'm going to die. <laughs> this is like, uh, yeah, too much of a good thing. You need to combo this with Necropotence. And some card that won't make you lose for having no cards left in your deck. Darksteel Ashura with the Scramble Verse. Scrambleverse is a red red six generic sorcery for each non-land permanent choose a player at random I love these random cards then each player gains control of each permanent for which he or she uh, was chosen untap those permanents yeah this is one of those cards that are just gonna suck up the time all night to resolve okay next up we got Kagan with bring in the power of the world with the nether void Another void is a four mana world enchantment. Whenever a player plays a spell, counter it unless its controller pays three. So basically, nobody gets to play squat unless you can pay the three mana tax. You have three mana? No, it's basically the game starts once you have like four mana in play. That's like your first land drop for the turn. Okay, Darkstar Ashura also donating for Stranger Candy, uh, Strixhaven Stadium. Okay, we got a stadium, three mana artifact, tap, add a colorless, put a, put a point counter on Strixhaven Stadium. Whenever a creature deals combat damage to you, remove a point counter from Strixhaven Stadium. What's the point? Whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to an opponent, put a point counter on Strixhaven Stadium. Then if it has 10 or more point counters on it, remove them all and that player loses the game. Hunt. So whenever a creature I control deals combat damage to an opponent, 
Does it trigger for each creature, or if I attack with 10, deal 10, 10, then do I get 10 triggers, or do I just get one trigger? Whenever a creature you control deal, I think I think it's just gonna trigger once, which makes this insanely slow. Because it just says, it doesn't say for each creature. Yeah, it's just when a creature deals damage, trigger it. Oh, it does trigger for each creature? If you attack with 10, you get 10 point, uh, point counters. If all 10 hits, they die. Oh, oh my goodness. This game could be over before it gets started. I don't think it's that slow. And you also get free point counters for just tapping and adding mana with this thing. Yeah, that's good. Okay. Got case. I'm disqualifying this thing. <laughs> it's actually... It's really slow still. Okay, I'm gonna. I, oh, because like you, it's really hard to deal ten damage at once. Okay, you know what? I guess I'm gonna assume based on. I've never played with this card before. You guys are so wrong. This card is trash. All right. <laughs> yeah, this is Stranger Candy's card. I know this card. It's garbage. All right. I've tried for years to win with this card. It failed every time. It just doesn't win. It's too slow. I have this thing. Is terrible. Okay, we're gonna trust Stranger Candy on that one. Okay, Kagan, uh, with a never-ending torment. Would it count? We'll find out in a second. Uh, this is a six mana sorcery. Search target player's library for X cards, where X is the number of cards in your hand, and remove them from the game. Then the player shuffles their library and has epic. You literally cannot play cards for the rest of the game. This card is absolutely terrible. You may not even have seven cards in your hand. I guess the idea is like every single turn, if you have seven cards in your hand, you can start removing their library from the game. Uh, or I guess if you have like what, Reliquary Tower, you can get to eight, but like still, this is gonna just gonna take forever to pull off. Yeah, this is incredibly slow. Very slow win condition, even worse. Worse in Commander, because 99 card decks, and you have three opponents. Remember, Epic, for the rest of the game, you can't play spells. That's it. You just get a copy of Neverending Torment every turn. We did Shahrazad, uh, uh, the slowest card possible on today's list. Okay, another Dark Star Ashura special with uh, the Spawn Shire of Ulamog. This is a 10 mana 7 11. But for an additional 20 more mana, you can cast any number of Eldrazi cards you own from outside the game without paying their mana cost. I don't know how you can cast... I don't even know how you cast this thing. Or not... I, I don't know how you activate this thing for 20 mana. Has anyone ever pulled that off? In pre-release, these cards were really funny. They were really funky. You did get up to 10 mana all the time. Oh yeah, because of the Scion tokens. It was all, it was all about the Scion tokens. You gotta get them Scion tokens. Pacers fan forever with the Orb of Dreams. Three mana. Permanence coming to play taps. That will slow the game down. If anything is going to slow the game down, it's going to be that. Then some of those cards with stun counters on them, they're completely screwed. This plus what? What? River? Uh, River Delta, was it? It's like you have to tap it to put the to add the mana and put the counter on. Oh no, it would just untap because it doesn't have a stun counter on it in the first place. I guess that's how it would work. Okay, Emperor with the Goblin Bomb. You know, if goblins know how to make a bomb, why are they throwing their like cousins uh, into like they're you're always firing their family out of a cannon or whatever? Okay, Goblin Bomb, two mana enchantment. During your upkeep, you may choose to flip a coin. Target opponent calls heads or tails while the coin is in the air. If the flip ends up in your favor, put a fuse counter on Goblin Bomb. Otherwise, remove a fuse counter from Goblin Bomb. Remove? Remove five fuse counters from Goblin Bomb. Sacrifice Goblin Bomb. Goblin Bomb deals 20 damage to target player. This card is absolutely abysmally terrible. Okay, someone with the geometric calculator. What are the odds? How, how many, I guess the question you have to, like, 
how I guess the question you have to ask yourself is um, I don't even know how to ask this question like how many times you have to flip a coin until you hit five with certainty hit five flips and with like what are the probability of hitting five flips because they're like if you flip five coins the odds of getting five flips in a row are like garbage so like every single time you flip a coin and you lose the flip you you you've got you went nowhere you got nowhere at all Carla with some insight. Goblins are dumb on almost all the planes in MTG. The exception is probably the goblin in Kamigawa. There are, there are more clever around there. Well, most coin decks have multiple coin flips, to be fair. But still, like, even if you're flipping the coin here, uh, I mean, you basically, ha you need, like, Clark's Thumb or something where you, or there, there's, like, some cards that ignore coin flips, so you can ignore the losing results. That's what's necessary uh, if you're playing with Goblin Bomb. Because otherwise, this will take forever. I don't know what the odds are of getting to five flips without getting any tails. At least it doesn't go in the negatives. It won't remember the times that you got more, you you lost more than you won. Okay, Kagan with uh, Celestus Sanctifier. Uh, we're going to super chats here. This is a 3-mana, three 3-2 three, Human Cleric. Uh, if it's neither day or night, it becomes day. As Celestial Sanctifier enters the battlefield. Whenever day becomes night or night becomes day, look at the top two cards of your library. Put one of them into your graveyard. So you're basically spending 3-mana on a 3-2. Because otherwise, uh, you're going to take forever to ch change between day, or between day and night. Okay, David Grove says, starting from nothing, the odds of getting five in a row is one out of 32. Yeah, just getting five in a row. So I'm curious. I don't know how to word this question. How to get five, like a surplus of five. How to get five more than tails. I guess at, at any point, it just changes, right? So if you're if the odds of getting one five in a row are one out of 32, then if you're one ahead, then it's just like how many you get four in a row. Sounds like a nightmare to th even just think about. Pacers fan forever with the Halo Fountain. This is the Angel Drugs, right? Three mana, artifact, pay white, tap, untap target creature you control. Create a 1-1 one, one green, green and white citizen creature token. Then for double white, tap, untap two tapped creatures you control, draw a card. And then for five mana, tap, untap 15 tap creatures you control and you win the game the hardest part is enabling any of this you're looking at point zero one two five percent you can choose. holy crap they're just making fun of people anyone who's playing with goblin bomb if that's the right uh if that's the right percentage point you're talking about point percent that's less than one percent this is disgusting uh, okay, Death Shadow's Crappy Cousin, The Shadow of Mortality. I don't know if this one's going to count. It's a black, black, 13, 7, 7. If your life total is less than your starting life total, the spell costs X less to cost, where X is the difference. You just lose 13 life. That's it. It's actually not that slow. Okay, I'm going to donate this one to the uh, freebie section. You just lose 13, that's not, that's what I have to do. Lose 13 life and boom, get a Shadow of Mortality out for two mana. You just have to try hard. Fetch lands, shock lands, street wraith, Gataxian probe, you can do it. Okay, deaf, uh, deaf donable. Ensnaring bridge, you're not wrong. Ensnaring bridge, I hate this card. If it enters the battlefield, nobody does anything. Three mana. Creatures with power greater than the number of cards in your hand can attack. Well, that's great. That just completely defeats the purpose of playing the game in the first place. Good for the combo decks and control decks. Not so good for me and my merfolk deck. Or my wizard deck. App and snaring bridge. That's right. Some people uh, hate the bridge. If you're close to the merfolk kin as I am. We all hate the bridge. Uh, all right, Evan with the Monument to Perfection. 
What super chat sound effect I'll give you? Ah, I'll give you this one. Two mana, artifact, pay three, tap, search your library for a basic sphere or a locust land card. Reveal it, put it into your hand, then shuffle. Then what? Pay three. Monument to Perfection becomes a 9-9 Frexian Construct Artifact Creature token. Loses all abilities, gains Indestructible, and Toxic 9. Activate only if there are nine or more lands with different names among Basic, Sphere, and Locust you control. It's going to take forever to pull this thing off. So you start in cheap with two mana, but then you got to get nine. You need nine different lands in play. And you still have to activate this in, uh, activate this in the end. Elgot, stack of paperwork makes combat take longer. Oh, we're really on over. No, we're not done. Uh, we're just going really late today. Stack of paperwork. White, when stack of paperwork enters the battlefield, you draw a card. Combat damage uses the stack. Oh, this is just... This is not actually takes forever. I mean, it makes it a little bit slower, I guess. Uh, this is how magic used to be played. They're just, they're literally bringing damage on the stack back. It wasn't that complicated, even though it was adding more complication to a game that was already complicated. Okay, I'm donating this super chat. Let's give it to the Abyssal, Shaku Endbringer. Shaku. Seven mana for a 5-5 five, five flyer. Cannot attack if there is another creature in play. Then what is the point of you? During your upkeep, lose three life. Tap, remove target creature from the game and put a plus one plus one counter on Shaku. When is this card is going to attack? The answer is never. <laughs> it's, this card is never going to attack. You have to slowly, every single turn, remove creatures from the game. It's more of a removal spell than an attacker, that's for sure. The point of flying, uh, pointless. Okay, next up, we've got the Luck Bobblehead. Oh, it's literally a bobblehead. Three mana, tap to add one mana of any color. Pay one, tap, you're gonna have to roll a six-sided, uh, six-sided die. Where X is the number of bobbleheads you control. Create a tap treasure token for each even result. If you rolled ex uh, rolled six exactly seven times, you win the game. And this is not particularly a slow card unless you really... If this is literally your win condition... Okay, under this, con under this condition, if this is the only way you can win the game, this will be a very slow card. Because I have no idea what the odds are of rolling six simultaneous... It's like, what are the odds of rolling one out of six six times? Uh, odds are very low. Yeah, so you're probably going to be rolling these dice all day. If this is literally your only way to win the game. Yeah, this show really turned into math probability show. Yeah, it turn, turned into one of those shows where, like, you love the math. You love the math. Pacers fan forever with the static orb. Classic. Just if, if it's untapped, players can't untap more than two permits during their turns. Be careful with your attacks. Also be careful with what mana you need to play. Okay, if it was legal, the Grand Calculatron. Oh, God. Yeah, obviously not legal. Okay, two mana, legendary artifact. Enters the battlefield. Each player's hand becomes a program. An ordered row of revealed cards. Players can only play the first card of their program. Okay. If a card would be put into a player's hand from anywhere, that player reveals it and places it anywhere within his or her program instead. At the beginning of each player's end step, if that player's program has fewer than five cards, he or she draws cards equal to the difference. This is just a weird card, in my opinion. Does this really make things slow? It actually makes things less slow, right? Because once you have the program, you can only play cards in that program. The beginning of each player's end step of that player's program has fewer than five cards. I actually don't think this is even slow. I think it speeds up the game. It just takes a while to... I guess it takes some time to set up. No, maybe you're right. 
um you have to set up your program so like i guess everyone's gonna like okay what what do i want to play first what do i want to play second what do i want to play third uh but that's it that's the slow part of it all i stim way too much with my hands for this to be a thing <laughs> Dark Star Shura. Okay, we're gonna, let's get one on the board here. Is Dark Star Shura. Okay, any card that brings stickers or attractions, just because you have to explain the rules of it every time. Let's say Chicken Trope. Yeah, I still, I honestly still have no idea how attractions work or stickers. It's completely meaningless to me. Two mana for a two-two with Ward Two. When the tro troop enters the battlefield, you get a, no, you get a ticket. It's an attraction? Yeah, I think that means a tr attraction. Then you would put a sticker on a non-land permit you own. See, I don't even know why this takes so much time. Do it's another way of slowing the game down? Ask to do even or odd at the beginning of the game. Then when there's any arguments, you'll... It's funny, the, the people who want to... There's the high rollers. People who want to roll for, uh, high or the people who want to do odd or even. And the people, the people who do odd or even, they think they're saving time at the beginning of the game. But then they're always going to get some argument from their opponent for one thing or another, actually slowing the game down. Okay, Pacers fan forever. Uh, which one is this? Males Aria. Credit goes to Christopher B. May. That's very nice of you for giving Christopher B the credit. Oh, I didn't put the L in. Okay, this is a three-man enchantment. At the beginning of your upkeep, you put a counter on each creature you control. If you control a creature with power five or greater, you don't even get a you don't even get the counter on every creature. Uh, then you gain ten life if you control a creature with power ten or greater, which is never going to happen. Then you win the game if you control a creature with power twenty or greater. Oh, I see. So you put counters on creatures, and they incrementally get better. And then when you get to twenty counters. You win the game! Or I guess not 20 counters if a creature is just big enough. So you gotta, if you want to win the game with this card, you got to cheat a little bit. All right, Evan. Uh, Avizoa. Slow and terrible. The Avizoa. There's actually a few Avizoa cards. I wonder which one you were talking about. I'm assuming it's this one. Uh, four mana for a 2-2 two, two, flying. Skip your next untap phase. And it gets plus two, plus two until end of turn. Usability only once each turn. I don't even want to use it once. Even for one turn. And that's it, everyone. Those are the slowest cards in Magic the Gathering. Hope you had a lot of fun. I most certainly did. And if you want to be part of the show... Oh, wait a minute. We got... Emperor sneaking something in at the last second. Adamus! Okay, we're gonna have one more. Adamus. Adam. Adam Sis, all seeing for David Sampson. For six mana, four, five flyer, pay three, draw two cards, then discard a card. Then uh whenever Adam Adam Sis all seeing deals combat deals damage to an opponent, you may reveal your hand. If cards with at least six different converted mana costs are revealed this way, that player loses the game. Holy crap! I don't know how long it'll take to set up, but uh, yeah, be careful. Okay, if you want to be part of the show, you got to be here at 11 o'clock a.m. Central Standard Time. Thanks, everyone, for your support. Oh, my God, I love your support. Everyone who's a patron on Patreon, a member on YouTube, or you super chat to be part of the show or help other people be part of the show. Giving credit to some of those people. And thank you, everyone, for being here in the morning. Because without without people like Proto Pond, Mr. Wapsis, Christopher B, Dark Star, Ashura, Pacers fan forever, Iris, Mr. Deadhead, Christopher, well, Christopher B is still here again, Toad, Steve Cooper, Kev K, J, Jess, David Sampson, Evan, uh, Bacon Catbug, Dingle Bag. I would have no show. You guys are the show. So as usual, my coffee crew, keep brewing up them coffees, and we will keep brewing up the magic. Take care of yourselves, and I will see you at the next cup. <laughs>